Well, welcome to uh, North Sales One Design here in beautiful San Diego, California. I'm going to show you a little bit about the, uh, the life of a sail that we design and build here. Welcome to the design office here at North Sales One Design. This is where I spend most of my time behind the computer, analyzing sail shapes, getting sails ready for production, and some performance analysis. This is where we set up the 3D boat model that's gonna represent the boat in real life. All the sheeting locations, the panel stiffness of the mast, as well as the shroud points are all accurate, in this case, to the Viper 640. Spiral creates a virtual mold that defines all the maximum cambers, forward shaping, twist, exit angles, all those little things that sail designers talk about when we analyze sail shapes. Once I get the sail shape dialed in, it's time to place the panels onto the mold. 3D layout calculates all the shaping that goes onto each side of the panel. After the shaping's determined, we can use our finite element analysis software to see how that sail is going to fly theoretically under a specific sailing condition. So once we're confident with our theoretical flying shape, it's time to take the sail design to the plotter and cut it out with our laser plotter. So we're up here on the second floor with our M90 plotter. This is what we use to cut out all of the sail panels before they go into production. And that's set up to cut precisely what the design shape of the sail is supposed to be. So there's shape on every panel edge that we cut. Everything in red is what's gonna get cut with the laser. Everything in blue is what gets marked with the pen. That way I can put all the batten pocket reinforcements, all the shape stripes, and all of the luff tab marks so that when the sale goes into production, it's essentially a recipe of all the details and accessories that go onto the sale. The way everything started was just like a typical sail loft. Low start uh, making start sales, and then from small boat sales, we slowly kind of start going making bigger boats. Got involved in America's Cup in 1977 with low sailing uh, enterprise. The one design sales, all of a sudden, were kind of a little bit of a second class citizen. I would say 1982 was a discussion about maybe switching and making the loft just a one design sale loft just to concentrate fully on one design sale. So after the sails get cut at the plotter, they get bundled up and get ready to be stuck together where they take their form. Uh, this is a fin sail that's going to go to Zach Raley on the U.S. Alpha Graphics team. After the sails in one piece, They'll uh, take it over to one of these two seaming stations. Uh, they'll just run it through the machine, nice and smooth at a steady pace, so that uh, the seams are even and the threads are nice and spaced out perfectly. The next stage of layout's right over here with Hung. Hung takes care of all of our luff curves and our leeches to make sure that they're installed perfectly. Hung, how long have you been working for North Sales? Uh, more than uh, 15 years. 15 years. So he does the luff curve on every sale that goes through production, and that's a, a, a huge asset to the company and to North Sales, so that we know that that, that luff curve is going to be perfect every time. Once the sales have the luff tapes and they're stuck on and ready to go through the rest of the production stages, they come over here to finishing. Uh, Tran and Kim are in charge of sewing the luff tapes on, sewing the leech folds on, and making sure any luff treatments such as uh, luff tabs like on this e-scout jib get on perfectly. A lot of our sails get blocks on the clue so that they can uh, use two to one sheeting for the jib sheet. John Rivera does all of our handwork and uh, he has the last bit of work to do on the sails before they're ready to go to the customer. John's in charge of putting in all the grommets, all the headboards for the mainsails, all the treatments that go onto the corners of the sails. The old loft was a loft that started on one side and slowly got built uh, bigger and bigger and bigger. So it was the, the layout was not ideal, it was just a, a compromise in a way. And in this new loft, the layout of the loft for, to do one design sails is second to none. We've developed our new two-boat testing system in conjunction with North Sails Japan. This is a pretty slick system that's only been used in the America's Cup boats. On the two sailboats, on the two Optimus, they have onboard GPS so I can track their boat speed and their heading. They also have an onboard camera system that's linked to my Wi-Fi network on board. All of those photos that are taken at once per second or at one hertz 
gets sent to my laptop computer inside the motorboat. The mast top camera shooting at one photo per second really covers the whole sail and shows how it changes with subtle tuning or trimming differences. So here's a three minute test run of the two etchels going upwind. The blue boat to windward shows that they were able to point a little bit higher during that three minutes. So knowing that the blue boat gained in VMG a pretty significant amount during that three minutes, I want to take a look at those two sail shapes and see maybe I can figure out why the blue boat was going so fast and going so high or why the red boat wasn't going quite as well. So here's where the really cool part happens. We know that the blue boat was going faster for that three minute test. So from those two photographs, I can take those two flying shapes of the sails and transfer them into a 3D IGES file. I can now overlay the two sails and see exactly how those trimming differences were. The evolution was so, and it's such a fast pace. First, uh, Lowell bringing in the famous garbage bag material that made the enterprise uh, generous. Designing sails with uh, software, with, uh, with a computer. Then we had the 3DL uh, technology with the mold and everything else. I mean, you look at sail that we built in 1977 versus a sail that we built today, and you see customers today that would say, well, I see a little wrinkle there, and so a wrinkle now is uh, something that is is a uh, huge imperfection when in the old days, a uh, wrinkle was just something people would expect to have in the sale. And so it's a constant battle just to keep uh, being ahead of the curve on this. 